Hi everyone. Today I'm painting an elephant for Holi, the Indian festival of colors. And I'm talking through the process of painting it with watercolor and acrylics and sponge painting and splattering paint for a holy powder like effect for the background. Let's start with the sketching stage. I found one cute elephant photo from my sister's old holiday photos from India. After that I searched for more photos from pexels.com, which offers free photos for commercial use, so you can use them as reference photos without worrying about copyrights. I chose one of them as the main reference and used the grid method to get the proportions about right when I sketched the elephant, but I changed up some of the features of the elephant. I link to another video about the grid method if you want to know how to use it. I also took inspiration from other elephant paintings I found. Let's take a look at the tools and materials I used. I'll also list them below. I sketched on craft paper to make it easier to use the grid method and transferred the sketch using graphite transfer paper. I painted on watercolor paper and taped it onto a piece of hardboard to keep it in place and prevent the paper from warping too much. And I used the Gottman watercolor set. Besides using brushes, I also used a sponge and a cotton swab. I put water in two glass jars. The point is to wash brushes in one jar and use the clean water in the other for diluting the paints. But I usually forget that. Paper towels are also handy for wiping the brushes and lifting the paint when you make mistakes. I'll talk about the acrylic paints later. I transferred the sketch onto 250 GSM watercolor paper by taping the sketch on top of the paper, placing the transfer paper between them, darker side down, and tracing the sketch with a ballpoint pen. The transfer lines tend to show up in the final painting from underneath the watercolor, so I erased some of them a bit and changed them to watercolor pencil which will dissolve when you paint over it. I started the painting with watercolors. I was making this in a kind of a hurry because I wanted to finish it before Holly was over and I knew I wanted to paint the background in acrylics to get the effect I wanted, but I paint faster with watercolor so I used watercolor for the elephant. I layered the watercolor starting with a light wash of cobalt and ultramarine blue and leaving the highlight parts white. I also mixed in a bit of crimson red and burnt amber to make the blue more grayish, especially in the legs, because I wanted the main focus to be on the face. I added more saturated color to create the texture of the elephant skin and to add shadows. I wanted the main colors of the painting to be blue, a cold red and yellow, so I added the crimson red to the ears and the trunk. By the way, if you need help deciding on a color scheme, you can use the free Adobe Color Wheel at color.adobe.com. You can choose one color you want to use and let the color wheel suggest other colors based on different color schemes like a complementary color or a triad color scheme. I knew I was going to paint the decorations on the elephant with acrylic, so I left most of those parts white. You can paint acrylic over watercolor, but not the other way around. When the watercolor part was done, I switched to acrylics for the background and decorations. I first painted the background black. The black I have from Lidl is not that opaque, so I mixed it together with an opaque white by plus color. To create an opaque dark gray. I first outlined the elephant with a small brush to be precise and next I filled in the rest of the background with a larger brush to get it done faster. I let the background dry but I thought it wasn't dark enough so I painted pure black over it. Since the background was already covered with dark gray it didn't matter that the black wasn't completely opaque since all that would show through was the dark gray and not white. Then I painted white acrylic over the watercolor on the jewelry and decorations. I protected the elephant before painting the holy powder effect on the background. 
I just put a copy paper over the painting and traced the outline of the elephant and cut it and taped it on the elephant. I mixed acrylics from little and plus color acrylics to create the blue, purple and red holy powder colors because the plus color paints alone were a bit lighter than I wanted. I used sponge painting to get the powdery look. Afterwards I added splatters by making the paint really watery and then tapping the brush against another brush. Remember to protect the surface you're working on because you'll get splatters all around. And wipe them off right after you're done before they dry. Some of the splatters were quite big and I could have used a smaller brush. I actually watched a holy acrylic painting tutorial by the art Sherpa where she used splatters and cotton swabs for the holy powder. I linked to that video if you want to see her technique. I realized at some point after making the sketch that the placing of the powder behind the elephant's back like this might not be the best idea because it might seem like they're coming from the elephant itself, which was not my intention. And I was going to make them more diagonal, like they were coming from the sides outside of the painting, but I forgot and this is what I did. When the background was done, I took off the protective paper and painted all the jewelry and decorations in acrylics. I used at least two layers for the yellow and red parts to make them look even and opaque. The cloth on the back looked kind of empty, so I added abstract flowers on it by dabbing on paint with a cotton swab. I painted these teardrop shapes of yellow around the eyes and of course the transparent yellow turned into green with the blue watercolor underneath. I also lined all the acrylic parts of the face with metallic cold acrylic paint to add some shine. The paint splatters in the background were not that bright, so I added more concentrated paint drops with a small brush. And the lower part of the background looked empty, so I continued the dots there too. Now let's peel off the tape, and after that I have one more little tip for you. If you're planning on framing the painting that you tape down with masking tape, the white edges might be visible when it's framed. I don't like that, so after removing the tapes, I paint the white edges either black or some other color that's close to the background color of the painting. That way I don't get those white annoying edges. As always, if you like this painting, Prints, stickers, phone cases, notebooks and other merch of this elephant are available in my Redbubble shop. Thank you so much for watching and happy holly if you celebrate it. Before you go, I want to thank you again because we reached 1000 subscribers on this channel about a week and a half ago. I have a video planned for that that includes calligraphy, but I'm not sure when I'll have time to make it. Anyway, see you next week and have a great day. Bye!